Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Play. I'm Sam Carlson of SpawnRoom.com. Uh, today's episode is a little bit different. Uh, I'm not going to be covering a match or like general strategy or anything like that. Today is a specific lesson regarding any competitive game, although today we're going to specifically be in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, um, but this really could apply to anything. Um, what we're going to be talking about is understanding probabilities in competitive gaming, and also why professionals do the things that they do, why hindsight bias is not your friend, um, that sort of thing. So it's going to be uh, hopefully pretty interesting, hopefully you'll be able to um, kind of get a new perspective on on competitive strategy, I guess. Uh, also, there is a, 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 blah, 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 an attached article uh, in the video description below. You can click it, you can go to spawner.com and read it if that's a better way for you to read these sort of things and grasp uh, what I'm talking about. Hopefully I, I articulated it better in there. Um, than I do on video. So let's move over to the game. Okay, so one question I've always asked myself um, until I learned more about strategy and also read stuff on lesswrong.com about probabilities and things is I'd be watching a match, you know, with some pro teams and I'd be going, why didn't they do this other thing like why did they do that why didn't they do this other thing that seemed obvious it seemed more successful i mean you know like the player jumps to his left and he moves down this tunnel and then he gets killed and i'm like dude obviously the enemies were there you should have known that blah 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 that's called hindsight bias and hindsight bias is not your friend basically what hindsight bias is is that humans uh, when viewing something from the outside we look at it and we we give ourselves a much higher percentage um, ch like chance of us making the right decision than we what we really would have in the moment in the moment it's really hard to dis like determine what we're supposed to be doing because our brains just aren't really wired that well for making on the spot calculations okay so knowing that I, you know i would still watch these games and go why did they why did they do that they should have still done something different so anyway from a non-professional viewpoint oftentimes it seems that there are alternate options that would be highly successful that professionals simply do not use or don't seem aware of the reason for this is derived from statistics uh, there are actions and reactions that are more successful because of assumptions we can make about our opponent um, if both teams know that certain actions are more statistically likely than others, then they assume that both teams will do them. So then intuitively you might think, well, why don't they just do the opposite to surprise the enemy team and win? Well, this is only slightly true. Surprise maneuvers that are statistically less likely to succeed can work, but the problem is a trade-off of increased risk. In retrospect, there are always alternative options that could have worked better. Um, including a w wide range of offbeat and risky choices. But the problem is that players must work in the moment and make decisions based off tried and true successful choices and what they know. Um, going off the beaten path, professional path means taking a higher risk by employing a generally less successful strategy. And while it may work once or even twice, the opposing team will simply adjust to counter your tactics. Once they adjust, they employ the most successful counter tactic. Um, and then they, you know, dominate you or they nullify your current strategy. Um, so imagine that there are all these different routes you can take on any given map. And as you can see right now, I'm in Dust 2 and I'll be moving around the map in a little bit um, talking about that. So, but imagine you're on, on Dust 2 right now. Um, you and the enemy team are making choices as you move around the map. And as you do that, each route that you can, cho you can choose are dynamically adjusting to a percentage success rate. Um, and this is based on, you know, the enemy team's current positions, their hit points, how much ammo they have, all sorts of things. As a player, you are trying to determine, based on the current situation, the current moment in time, what is the highest percentage path to take. If I choose the left path, I have a known 65% um, chance of success, while the right path is 75%. Um, well, then you want to choose the right path, because statistically, you will perform better over the course of a tournament. So. Um, basically what that means is say we come we're you know we're going B maybe it's a it's not right at the beginning it's a little bit later in the match and you come up to this point here and you look left and you can kind of determine like okay that's maybe a 50% chance if I go through B because sometimes there's an opera there whatever so you think 
there's a 75% chance if I descend the stairs and um, go through into mid. Uh, you, if you make more successful decisions throughout the course of a tournament. See, like, it might not work. Maybe you'll descend the stairs, and there's a CT there, and he kills you right away. You might think intuitively, well, obviously that was the wrong decision. I should have went through tunnel. But no. If you go through tunnel, 50% of the time you're going to lose. If you go down the stairs, you're going to win 75% of the time. Only 25% of the time you'll lose. It just happened that this was one of the 25% times, bam, you're dead. But 75%, you actually, this would be the successful route. What you're doing over the course of a tournament, over the course of a, a series of matches, is you're trying to make more successful decisions more often because then you'll win more of the time. Yes, you will lose rounds still, but you'll win more rounds than you'll lose. Um, so that's basically the idea. That's that's what's going on. That's why it's important to determine what are you know what are the probabilities. How can I increase my success in a, in a match? Um, and really, that the whole the whole reason strategy exists is because of this. Because the human mind isn't that great at making quick, accurate calculations. We can actually have tournaments. We can have games with each other because. Because that's kind of what you're doing. You're trying to, like, yeah, you you know, in sports, in traditional sports, you're trying to, like, be physical and strong and stuff. But really, it comes down, the reason we can even have strategy in the first place is because it's all in the head, too. We have to determine what what can we do with our minds. What, like, I know that this I'm smarter than this person or smarter than some of the people on this team, so I can determine this, the calculations better. Um and that's what's really cool. Like if we were all, say we all had really, really um, super powerful brains and we had all the data and all that stuff, we would tie like every match or every match would be really boring because we would know we'd be like calculating, calculating and be like, boom, we know that there's going to be a guy here. I know exactly. I saw him running down B and I know I can do the calculation to the millisecond to know that he's crossing, 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 bam, headshot, perf you know, whatever. Like, it would just be boring. We'd be very robotic about it, right? Okay. Let's talk about another example. Let's say it's mid-match, and you're standing in mid here, and you just happen to see one of your um, opponents cross the door, and he doesn't look, for whatever reason, he doesn't look, and he, and he disappears from view into CT spawn, okay? Here's, this is like an example of probabilities. So in your mind, you're going, okay, he's, he just checked B and he's heading through CT spawn towards um, bomb plant A. Now, there's not a 100% chance that he's going to go to A. There just isn't. He, who knows what he's going to do, right? But you determine that, say, there's a 85% chance that he's going to continue to A to go check it out. 85%. That's pretty damn good. But there's also a 15% chance that he's going to um, get into CT spawn and go, hmm, you know, maybe I should check B again, or maybe I should check mid. So there's a 15% chance that he's going to turn around, reverse direction, and either head to B or head to mid. Okay? Um, so, oh, I'm kind of lagging here. Probably should have turned on my settings before I ran this. <laughs> well, anyway. So now, in your mind, you need to start making decisions, and you need to start calculating. What is he actually going to do? Um, you know certain things. Like, you can figure out certain things, too. Like, um, if you plant it at B, uh, and the round timer is getting low, and he's in CT spawn, or whatever, or you don't know where he is, or you know the general area of where he is, you can figure out certain calculations, right? Like, there's a high much higher percentage chance that he's going to come up to be either through double doors or windows rather than going mid and through because there's not enough time or maybe you have you he knows that there's enemies over here he knows that there's enemies in the tunnel around stairs so he knows that that's just too dangerous maybe it's one on two or something like that so he's still going to come there's still a higher probability chance that he's going to come through do double doors or windows so you're that's what you're basically trying to do is you're trying to determine what is like what is what could possibly be going on in his head and what are the the statistics behind it is he gonna try um try and come through these doors or maybe there's enough time and if and he's sitting down here and he goes 
you know, he happens to know that you're in B, and there's this other player in here, and he happens to know that you're the best player on their team. Well, he's got just enough time. He's actually going to go mid now, and you could figure that out. You could say, he knows we've played together. He knows I'm better than him. He's probably not going to do a, f a f direct assault on me um, because it's it's just more risky. It's it's statistically more risky. So he's going to try and come in here and um, and get the guy who's just slightly less skilled or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully that all made sense. Um, I Obviously the article, if you want to go read it, um, it is probably a lot better, a lot more articulated. It's hard to like do get all these thoughts out in a video, but um, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully uh, you can kind of grasp that and apply it to your own strategy and start to, um, you know, make more successful decisions. Uh, you can watch previous Behind the Play episodes that I did. I talk about this stuff bef um, before. I've talked about it um, while analyzing matches and stuff like that. Um, I also want to mention before I close that I'm going to be launching a new series called Competitive Snapshot. I had some people complaining on Reddit a while back um, that the Behind the Play episodes were way too long. You know, they're 40, 50 minutes. Um, people don't want to sit through that because, you know, like pausing the game and analyzing from every angle. Some people like it. Uh, some people don't. So I'm thinking about launching a competitive snapshot, which is just like little tiny segments, you know, maybe a minute long, a couple minutes, that analyzes a very specific thing um, in a similar way. So keep an eye out for that. Continue uh, or <laughs> consider subscribing above. Every uh, sub helps. And uh, same with likes and all that stuff. Tell your friends, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. See you next time.